Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we're looking at a fun but exceptionally niche game engine called RPG in a Box. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. It's an RPG creation kit. Uh, it's very simple, very straightforward, incredibly voxel based. If you're not liking voxels and you're not liking RPGs, I can tell you up front, this is definitely not the game engine for you. It's also in very early uh, access at this point. It is pre-early access on Steam. It is available now as an alpha, uh, but it's actually remarkably mature. And part of the reason for that is it's actually built over top of the Godot game engine. And had I not been told that little fact, I would have never known it. Just, you can't tell. This is very, um, you know, it's, there's, it's using the user interface elements, etc., from Godot. So obviously, you can see a little bit Godot isms in it, but you just cannot tell that this was built on top of Godot. So there is a lot of maturity to it, even though it is um, an alpha product. Now, the alpha side of it also comes to a lot of the missing functionality. It's quite simple. So in a lot of ways, this is a lot like, say, a, um, an RPG maker kit, but for voxel style games instead of tile map games. Uh, that seems to be what they're going for, and it is again all in one box. And it's pretty much the only tool you need. Now, the nice thing is uh, the programmatic experience is all visual based, it's very accessible. So if you are, um, you know, if you like the voxel art style and you're looking for something simple to get started with or just to play around with, this might be a great engine for you. Now, I will put all these links down below, but it's available at RPGinabox.com. And you can download it from itch.io. Again, this link is available right there. Uh, we're going to just be using the demo version here, uh, but it's 20 bucks uh, or more. Um, but if you want to try the demo, which is what we are using today, it is available here as a download. It may be in at about, um, oh, what was it? About 150, 160 megabytes. So it's not huge, uh, especially considering it comes with a lot of content included. Oh, yeah, 150 megabytes. Uh, so very straightforward that way. Uh, it's got sample projects to get you started. So uh, I went ahead and downloaded it already, uh, fired it up, and this here is the entrance level to uh, RPG in a box. Now straightforward, I'm creating a new game. Again, there are some limitations on the demo I'm using here, specifically one map only, 10 by 10, and there's a splash screen. So you can only make your maps 10 by 10 voxel tiles wide. So really, it's just for playing with the tools. But otherwise, you're seeing the full functionality in the demo. You just obviously couldn't create a usable game stuck to one level and that level limit in size. Um, so here, we'll go ahead and browse out. Let's throw this guy in, uh, oops. A temp folder, uh, create a folder, RPG box, YouTube. Alrighty, open, create here, uh, YT demo. And click this guy, so then you get all the starting assets to get going with it, and click OK. Otherwise, you get a blank one, and you basically have to provide everything yourself. You use the starter assets, you get a lot of predefined um, characters, etc., to work with, which is obviously quite nice. Now, this also does create your first map for you. So if I head on over here to maps, you'll see I have one map there. And I would create a new one, but unfortunately, with the demo, you can only have one map at a time. So let's open that example up and see exactly what you get. Again, if I didn't know that this was built on Godot, I would have never guessed that this wasn't a completely standalone project. It's completely different. But here you see the map, your creation surface. Uh, it's 10 by 10 in uh, voxel cells. You see here we got a bunch of tiles created for us. Um, go over here to the tiles list, and there they are there as well. Or we can go into the tile editor. So here's where basically things break down. You've got various different editors for different parts of your game. So right now we're in the map editor and you're in place or edit mode. So if we wanted to add something into our world, and then here you've got your various different tile levels. So basically your Z ordering, so for putting stuff on top of other stuff. So if we want to populate this world with something, we can go ahead and, so if I wanted to add a river here, I can bring it in here, left click and paint, or I can right click to rotate and then paint. And if I wanted to do it again on top of, these are your controls for uh, flipping up and down. So that is how you basically create your world on the world map, but we've also got over here your voxel editor. And this is where you create stuff. Now stuff is a pretty broad term, but uh, almost everything in your world is made out of voxel. So for example, if I come over here to the bridge tile, which you can see right here, well, if I double click that here, I'll, go, I'll show you from the map editor. So I'm in the map editor, I double click my bridge tile, and boom, you'll notice I am now in the voxel editor. Voxel editor is a straightforward, uh, somewhat primitive voxel editing package, but um, basically you can uh, create on a grid of voxel. So if I wanted to create a new item, like so, voxel object. 
You see here, it's basically drawn on a grid. We'll go over here to the editor tools. Here's where you pick your colors. So I'm going to make something out of purple voxels, like so. And then when you draw on top of a voxel, it creates your second layer. Uh, you can change the grid height that you're working with. Same with depth and width. And basically it is a simple 3D composition. So I can sit here and, you know, different color, fill in the blanks. And then when you paint again on top of the surface, it does the next level up. And then the next level above it, etc. And you can actually go one step further. You can actually do frame by frame animations of voxels. Now, if you've got your own preference for voxel tools, you can actually import in, oh, what were the formats? Uh, it's one of these buttons, import from, so Vox or PNG files can be brought in. I think Magic of Voxels supports the Vox file format, and Magic of Voxels is probably the default editor that you want. But there is this, it's a nice editor built in. It does a decent amount of stuff. It's got uh, the ability to define animation. So let me head back. So instead of tiles, I'm going to switch over. So we've got see objects. These are the things in your world, such as doors. Uh, you go over here, you get objects such as chair, or we get into characters. And these would be, you know, your monster, your characters, etc. The guy who created this name was Justin, so he's done a self-portrait here. And you see we've got a set of animations for him. So do the walk animation, flip through the frames of animation on that guy. So back to the beginning. So you can define animations. Um, in the editor, but it, it's a painful way to paint in my experience, but um, definitely usable. And again, the nice thing with this guy is you have that all in a box editor aspect. So all your stuff is created out of voxels, as you can see here, um, populated that way. So that is your voxel editor. We've got your map editor, as you saw over here. And then you see we have, um, we can fire off code that fires on the map. So for example, here I've got an onload script option or background music option, um, background type. Uh, I can change it from color to an image to a skybox. So I don't have the images to make a skybox. So let's go back to a color and we'll just change that out to red. Oh, we'll not do red. Yeah, we'll do white. Yeah. All right, you know what? <laughs> that hurts my eyes. So I'm gonna go back to black. And there we go. But you see, this is where you do your various different world attributes. You can group things together over here. So you can see we've got an NPC area and a slime area as groups. Uh, let's head on cross editor. So we saw map editor uh, is where you compose your maps. And you can compose your maps out of tiles. Tiles and characters and objects are all created in the voxel editor. And next up, we have the script editor. Now, the script editor is where you do your programming. Um, so as you saw for one, uh, we can link in, if we were back on our map, there is that on load script. Uh, you can also apply it to characters, etc. I believe. Uh, but let's say we wanted to go ahead and add some scripted logic to this. Let's go over to our script editor again, create a new script, call it my script, and you will see an entirely flowchart visual based programming interface. It's very straightforward, very simple. So this will, um, when this script starts, it goes here. So say you wanted to add a character to the world or a tile to the world, you can do double click add tile brings that in so we just control peg in like so we pick the tile we want to add so let's say we want to add a uh, I don't know grass tile to the world uh, where you want it to be added and what you want it to be called and so on and so forth so you just kind of keep adding your your stuff here so now say we want to look at something push that out click over here click here you set what to look at here. Uh, so we could do it by entity ID. So let's change this entity ID to my special tile. And then here your target could be, oh, I don't think that updated. But anyways, you can link it there. Your programming works this way. You see it's actually compiling down to script down here. You can see uh, what the script this visual is generating. Uh, very straightforward scripting. Um, pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. So that is your programming method here. And you see you've got most of what you need here. So you can set entity values, scripts. Uh, so you can attach a script to something. Uh, you can show the credits, show the inventory, show the toolbar. Um, wait over time, put the player somewhere, put an entity somewhere, the kind of stuff that you would expect to do. You got some cinematic stuff from fading in, fading out, uh, adding things to the world, causing damage. So um, it, it's 
it's accessible enough that someone that has almost zero programming experience could definitely pick this up. But it might be, a, you know, obviously, again, you're not going to create the next Ultima or, you know, Baldur's Gate using this system. It's more for, you know, fun, playable um, entry level games. Now, next up, we've got our dialogue editor. I don't know if I've had any. Oh, I do have some dialogues. So here is what Sarah says. And it's actually pretty sweet. Um, it's, again, visual based. You can see it's based off conditionals. So it says, hi, how are you? And then you've got your responses of, I am doing well or not so great. Those are the two options that you could come out when you're playing in the game. And then you see there's a following up response going on. You can say who they're targeting, etc. So really cool dialoguing abilities built in here. And you've got um, a pretty straightforward um, collection going on in terms of options. You can have portraits that show up uh, that are you know displayed during the conversation aspect. Go back here, your UI editor. This is um, where you control the various, the way built-in controls look in your world. So you have an inventory by default. You can change out the way the inventory looks. Uh, over here, you've got you know dialog box, inventory button. So if we wanted a different uh, button for accessing your inventory, uh, we could edit it out here, item slots, etc. So this is where you customize your actual game's UI. Uh, item editor, this is where you can add and populate items in your world. Pretty straightforward. Um, uh, I hope this gets flushed out a bit so you can actually add properties to items um, or scriptable values other than the, the name. But you see here, basically, it's a uh, name description and it, um, can you use it and image. Oh, so again, as it becomes less than just an alpha, hopefully some functionality gets added to this level. Uh, again, you got the same kind of thing for enemy and enemy can drop loot. Again, I hope this gets a little bit more sophistication as time goes on, but it's pretty simple to define enemies anyways. And your battle editor is right here. Um, I don't actually know exactly what this one does, so I'm going to just move on. Maybe we'll pretend we didn't see that. So we're going back to our map editor, but those are all the different pieces you need to actually go together to compose a relatively simple RPG. Um, and then we got some other stuff here. So we can import, import, ah, import resources from outside. This supports Nah, it doesn't tell me. No idea what it supports then, uh, but you can basically bring in outside assets, things like PNGs, I imagine, sound files, etc. Speaking of sound files, there is also, and this was kind of shocking to see this here, a sound effect generator. Now, if you've seen this channel for a while, I've actually posted a few of these. Um, uh, BFXR, I think was the name of one of them, Chiptune. There's a bunch of things, that Sunbox. There's a bunch of guys out there that do this kind of stuff, but it's cool to see this built in here. So if you need a laser sound, for example, you can take their random noises, tweak them out with various different values, and save them out as a sound file. So you got some built-in defaults. Um, you can randomize the sound effect, and then play around with the various different settings on it. And then when you like it, save it out, and you've got a sound there. So basically, there's a built-in graphics editor, built-in audio editor. Um, uh, this is just all of the various different assets that are available in the game. I think it's pretty much the equivalence of that. Um, also, you can go through the music that's available, like here, and preview it, like so. Uh, settings, not a whole lot going on there, basically customizing the uh, map editor settings. Your help, your help's actually pretty solid, it's all online, uh, but it does a walkthrough of all the various different editors, uh, shows you what's needed there, plus it goes into here, you've got a scripting reference of, remember I showed you at the bottom, there was the code being generated, you see that here, and drill down into any one of these and actually get um, some detail, including a nice little visual demo of what that code will do. So that's pretty cool, especially, again, if you're learning by experimentation, the documentation is pretty solid, pretty, pretty comprehensive for uh, what you're doing here. Again, this is a fairly simple uh, project style, um, so the, the documentation, it, it does work really well for a beginner. It's, it's pretty, um, if you can't figure something out intuitively, there is solid documentation for it down here. Um, and if you want to look from the script perspective, you also see it that way. It doesn't have to be visual. All right, so head on back into the engine. Uh, so that was about it. So that was help about, this is about box. Um, this exits out to basically where you go and create new projects or otherwise, I'm not going to do that. Um, and uh, you know what, I might be about there. That's, so we saw the editor tools earlier when I was working with the voxels. Uh, you, basically it's a palette choice, uh, various different controls for it, paintbrush, uh, fill, or replace. Um, over here, you see here we got all your various different tiles. Uh, you filter that down to just specific subtypes. Over here, 
we have the objects in the game. Again, you can filter that down to the various different subject subtypes. And then we've got the characters in the game. And populating a game character is a fairly straightforward process. You just grab her, bring her into the room, and there is one in the world. Nice to saw the real-time shadowing comes into effect. And that was set over here, your directional light or your ambient light settings here. You can control your camera here. And that is pretty much RPG in a box. It's um, very focused in what it does. Uh, you go ahead, you create your game. Again, I'm in a demo, so I'm stuck to one level, and that one level is pretty small. Uh, but once you string these levels together, so you can see here we got a script attached. Uh, I'm gonna edit to grab it. So you see here we got a script. Uh, I need to do an alt click, I think, to get a hold of that guy. So you see open door script is fired when you click on that guy. I'm going to my scripts, see if I can find that. Scripts, open door. And boom, here you can see a script that is controlling the process of opening door. So a quick boolean off of a variable, um, plays an animation, either open or close animation, and sets values, etc. So you could use this to navigate off to launch new code, string things together. It's pretty straightforward. If you've done any visual programming, this should be pretty intuitive to you. And if it isn't, again, at the end of the day, this is the code that's being generated. Nothing overly complex. It's, it's a very beginner-friendly tool, actually, I think. But again, you really can just create voxel-based simple RPGs. So that's not what you're looking for. This is obviously not the tool for you. But it's fun enough, I figured I would share it here. Then finally, when you're at the end of the end, uh, you've got this guy. And this is where you can export your project out. Now your file formats are, let's go up here I think, export game. You see here, you can target Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So no mobile targeting, at least not as of yet. I'm not sure if that is a come in the future thing or not, but um, your three major desktop platforms are currently supported. Exporting is super simple. Oh, you can't type in paths. That's annoying. Uh, if you want to export it out, let's just dump that to my temp folder. Temp. Uh, game out. Okay. And Windows build. Okay. Okay. So we're exporting, creating the executable. And here you see, created it in exe for us. And then the data that went with it. Click run. And again, when you're in the demo, you have to watch the splash screen. But once it's done loading, boom, there is your game running. Is it arrow keys? But there is the basics of it. There is that UI I was talking about, the various different things you can use, etc. Again, quite straightforward, quite simple. Uh, but uh, again, it's, it's accessible, it's kind of cool, it's kind of fun. Uh, I said right off the hop, this is an incredibly niche product. Again, it's also very early on, but if this is what you're looking for, it's a really cool turnkey key, uh, program. And you know, if you're trying to bring uh, a younger kid into the programming world, this might be a great place to start. Obviously, this isn't a, uh, you're, you're not making the next AAA title on this, but for what it is, it, it's very polished, very clean. Um, really, the only usability issue I've seen is that, um, putting in the paths, not being able to type it, which is you know a minor one, but definitely something. There, there are some room for improvements, but this is, again, a straight out um, alpha release right now. So, and the guy does, if you go onto the, uh, oh no, it was on this site. He does monthly updates of what's coming soon. Um, I think they're a little stalled right now on the progress because he is porting to Godot 3, uh, but it's a cool little project. Uh, again, I know it's only going to appeal to a very, very small subset of you, but I figured I'd share it anyways. So that is RPG in a Box, available at RPGinabox.com. Hope you found that interesting, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.